So hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pozzolo from Curval.com and it is Friday again. Oh my lord. So new Friday, new tax Fridays. And today I'm going to go through how to build a calendar the easy way. Okay. So I prefer to do my calendars in Power Query, but sometimes I have been forced to do them in DAX. And if you need to do them in DAX, there is an easy way to do them. Uh, and I'll show you that. I'll show you also the, the typical functions for building a calendar that you have available in DAX. But before we jump into that, take a look at this. 9,969. Huh? So very, very soon we're going to be 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, okay? Don't miss this. And um, I will be with you again at the end and we will talk a little bit about that. Okay, so first calendars, DAX, let's go. Okay, so here we are in Power BI and uh, as you can see, I am on the Power Pivot area, if we call it like that. And I have uh, two columns, a table with two columns, a date and time, and they are formatted as text. And I'm going to tell you in a second why they are as text. There is actually two functions that if you haven't used them, I'm sure you don't know about. I mean, you just know them when you need them. And the first one is this one date as date. So what this does, date value, it actually allows you to, let's see whether they are there. It actually allows you to convert a date that is in a text format as date. So if you go here, then you can change that to date. Let's put that as date. And there you go, okay. Uh, and you might wonder, okay, why, why would I need that? Well, of course, you can also go here and change directly here. If you don't have access to Power Query, I would recommend you not to do this. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes you need to grab things on the fly when you are doing DAX. And if those things, a date is stored as text for any reason, you can actually transform them on the fly to date, which is useful. And of course, the same happens with time. Uh, if we have a time value, it's also called. Uh, so we have time and these will transform time. There you go, as time or as date time. As you see, they transform it to date time and then you can just, you know, change it to date or whatever you need. So it's very, very good. Now let's start to build our calendar. Let's start with how about there is a function. Uh, day call day that will give you the uh, day number. There is a function called month and there is actually a better way. I'm going to show you in a second to do this. Uh, that will give you the month number. And of course there is a function year that will give you the year number. Uh, as, oh, sorry. Uh, there you go. Year, right? Okay, but this is not the perfect formatting. You know, you, you want to probably have a day as day, um, you know, day as zero one, month as zero one, or not. But if you want, Format is actually a better way. Um, let me show you how that would work. Day with format. So you will have format and then you put your uh, date column. And then you just write, if you write one D, it will give you the one number. If you write two Ds, it will give you two. <laughs> you can choose how you want to have it. If you write month, it will give you one. If you write month, two M's, it will give you the zero one. If you write three M's, 
it will give you January. If you write four M's, it will give you the entire name. I mean, it gives you so much flexibility to use format and to use month. There are different scenarios where you would use month. If you want to create a calendar, I recommend using format actually. It's so much flexible. Let's go through weekday. So weekday, I learned that from Google Analytics, all this calendar stuff. Weekday is actually, it says it there, one to seven identifying the day of the week. So this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, okay? So weekday, and then you have to fit it with a date. And then two is actually um, Tuesday. And then you have week number, week number, week number, and it returns the week number of the year. Uh, so here is, uh, again, you have to have the column. And the second parameter is actually, I mean, wonderful. It says one week begins on Sunday, two weeks begins on Monday. So if you're in Europe, you pick a two. And this is week number one. Good, eh? So let's say you want to have a quarter. So quarter format. Use format, really. It's so much easier. As date and then Q. And if you have two Qs, guess what happens? <laughs> it gives you an 11. Um, year quarter. You definitely want to have a year quarter. How do you write that? So you go format. If you have a year, you can pick the year, but because we are training, we are going to use format again, okay? Uh, then we're going to have the entire year, we want to have 2018. We are going to concatenate that with a Q. And then we're going to concatenate that with the actual format. Again, I know we have the column, we could just concatenate that just for training purposes. Let's practice. Yay! Really nice, isn't it? Okay, the last one, year month. Do you have to do this for year month? Nope, you don't. Let's do that. Year month. So format. Again, you have to fit it with the date. And then this is like in Excel, exactly like in Excel. So if you are an Excel pro, you know this by heart. So it is the same format that you can do in Excel, format that you can do in Excel, you can do it here. And it's so much easier. Do you see that? So yeah, this is the basic, basic needs you have for a calendar. And I'll show you some of the, the format um, functions that you have available for you to create it. So uh, now you have a working calendar. Okay, so easy, right? There is an easy way and there is an also easy way to build a calendar. Now you know both. So um, before I close this video, uh, I want to say that um, perhaps you're aware, perhaps you're not. I've been running a challenge for the time that I would reach 10,000 subscribers. And we were like 10, 8, 9, 10 people that... Uh, participated in the challenge. Uh, it was uh, either doing with machine learning or Excel or Power BI to try to predict what the date will be. And here is the list of all the participants. Thank you very much everyone for joining. Uh, if today would be the day of the 10,000, I might be the winner. Ooh, too. Oh, sorry. But here's the thing. And I intended to do that anyway. I want to thank everybody that participated for doing that. So I would really love if you could go to curva.com contact and give me your post address. You know, we're not the email address where we send physical stuff. Then I would love to send you a gift 
a little fun gift for as a thank you for participating. So I will post this also on Twitter to make sure you don't miss it. And uh, thank you again. It's been uh, so fun to see uh, your entrance. Uh, so, excellent. I'll finish this video now. But I'll see you again on Monday. Um, I actually didn't expect to reach 10,000 this week. I thought it would be next week. So the celebration videos will be next week instead. So rest in the weekend and let's celebrate on Monday. Yay. See you again. Bye.